The following is an original audio series from Sierra International Machinery, Pile of Scrap, with your host, John Sacco. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Pile of Scrap. Today, well, it's we're coming up to the end of the year, and uh, I thought I would do a podcast with uh, a year in review and some of the things that happened during the year that really I think are, are, are informational and, quite frankly, very important to our industry. You know, I hope everybody had a, a great holiday season, a great Hanukkah, a great Christmas, and uh, uh, just want to wish everybody the best as uh, we move forward into 2022. So the pile of scrap, if uh, we haven't been out on the road uh, of late, uh, just start out that I, I had COVID in, at the end of September. We were planning on doing some uh, podcasts on the road. I ended up getting COVID. I'm vaccinated, and I got it. And it's, it was an interesting 12 days in isolation, that is for sure. And now with the Omicron um, variant, you know, went from Delta and now Omicron and, and what have you, uh, you know, there are a lot of people still getting it. And uh, so traveling uh, outside our offices and going to see people, a little difficult. Hopefully in the new year in 2022, we can get out there and have some podcasts with other customers that it seems that people like, and I'm looking forward to this next year. But I wanted to talk about, to start off is in the year in review is a win and a loss that our industry had when fighting regulators. And I asked this question, who is your biggest competitor? And a lot of people are going to say, well, it's ABC uh, recycling down the street or XYZ recycling. To me, the biggest comp- competition to our industry isn't ourselves, isn't other recyclers. It's the government. To me, the government is our biggest competitor and they just keep coming and coming after us. They're relentless because they have the deepest pocketbooks out of anybody. And let me give you here in California what transpired this last year. Uh, first, I'm going to start with uh, a loss. The DTSC, which is the Department of Substance Toxic Control, made an emergency action to shut down automobile shredders in the state of California, calling them uh, hazardous waste processors. Well, they fought this in uh, late August and September, but withdrew the motion after we filed all our responses. And they did this, I think, in a very nefarious way. They took our playbook. They saw how we were going to respond, and they re re manipulated and resubmitted, and they won the action. Automobile shredders in the state of California have, based on their win, are now hazardous waste processors, but the auto shredders and other recyclers have filed suit to put an injunction against us to litigate this. Now, this, this is big because... In the end, commodities aren't waste. And I think this is the biggest problem we face because of the competition. Governments would love to lump in commodities as as metal and copper and iron and stainless steel and, and aluminum as waste. And if they could do that, just think of the power grab government would have by capturing our commodities that are traded free and fairly on the open market but now they get to control it. Now they get the revenues and the sinking revenue budgets as budgets soar throughout every city and municipality across this land. But just think of that victory, if they could win that, what they could do. And I think it's just even more essential that as anybody who would listen to this podcast, if you're in the recycling industry and you are not advocating and you are not out in front, we're just going to get destroyed. You know, the old saying, if you're not at the table, you're going to be on the menu. And quite frankly, our industry is on the menu in a lot of places across this land. So let's talk about the victory. ISRI members in California, the chap- our chapter of the Institute of Scrap Recycling Industry, sued the state of California, or Cal Recycle, a division there, that they wanted us to report all our materials that we purchase. They wanted to know the source, where they came from, and how many tons that we process. And they did this under the skies that, hey, this is diversion from landfill. Well, our commodities are never destined for the landfill. No no manufacturer who has a residual metal recyclables scrap 
is going to go to landfill with it. Or if you have aluminum residuals, or if you have copper residuals, or stainless residuals, any form of metal, paper, uh, cardboard, you're not going to the landfill with this material. These people are far too savvy, I understand. There's a commodity and they have a lot of value there. But Cal Recycle tried to co-opt all this as, um, and identify it as waste. So ISRI, the chapter, we sued Cal Recycle. And not only did we win, we won with bias to the point where they can't do that anymore. So if you are an ISRI member in the state of California, you do not have to report to the state of California any information. And just think about that. Why would they want to know where the sources of our information is? So if they could ever power grab recyclables and make it all waste, they would know immediately who has it. They know immediately everything about our industry and they don't have to do anything about it. The billions of dollars that our industry has invested, the private owners, the for-profit recyclers, such as Sierra and all our other friends across California and across this land, well, we would have lost our businesses. And, 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 and I, I don't think I'm overstating the problem here because this is, this is what we fight. That's why I say government is the biggest competitor we have. So I ask yourself, why? Why are they this way? Because I think a lot of it has to be attributed to the self-inflicted wound our industry has put upon ourselves. And what do I mean by that? Well, there's some bad actors out there. You, you read all the time, metal recycler and scam to buy stolen materials. And that's problematic. We got to weed those people out of our industry because one bad apple spoils the bunch. But, you know, there's a lot of us in this industry who do it the right way. Like here in California, you have to photograph everything you buy. You have to fingerprint and you have to have license plate. And we have tag and hole where you can't pay people for three days. And we're doing it by the book. But so all these bad actors out there that are doing it cause us harm, cause all of us who are doing recycling in the responsible manner and the proper manner they're hurting us and you know that, that that's got us that's got to stop also another thing is we we're hiding our industry is hiding from the fact that yeah our jobs look a little dirty you know there's little grit underneath the fingernails to be in the recycling industries but there's no without grit there is no green and green is not money green is the environment there's, it's an undeniable fact that recycling is essential and we are the essential raw material supplier to critical manufacturing. Without our materials, nothing gets made in this country. You can't make automobiles. You cannot build hospitals. You can't build schools. You can't build highways and bridges without recycled metal. Nothing electrical in, in, in the hospital, all the things inside the hospitals, all the equipment, all the electronics that run schools and phone systems and daily businesses cannot be made without our industry. And I think we need to get out in front of it now. I, I want more people. This should be your New Year's resolution. I, I sound like I'm preaching to the choir, but guess what? The choir's not singing loud enough. We need to get out there and we need to be posting why we're essential. Talk about the materials that we're processing and how we are supplying manufacturers with their raw materials so critical goods can be made. During this pandemic, what we heard about, oh, what's essential business? And the government got to choose winners and losers. Who got to be open and who didn't? Think about that. There was a lot of work done behind the scenes that got our industry in many states as essential. Why? Because we do supply mills and consumers with our product. Just think about this, paper. If it wasn't for the paper recycling industry, paper mills would have ran out of paper to make all the tissue paper, paper, toilet paper, napkins, paper towels, would probably run out in two to three weeks without recycled fiber. Our industry, the for-profit recycling industry, provides that material to the paper mills. This is, this is paramount to what we do. This is... I'm very passionate about it because I, I feel that we've lost our voice. Now, my marketing director, Lindsay Morelotta, she, she says, you're stealing my line. Well, it's true. Our industry has lost their voice. Get out, people, and get out there and get in front of this going forward because this is what's going to help us in educating policymakers, regulators, and activists that we do good for the environment. We do good and great paying jobs. You know, our 
industry, there's so many good paying jobs, jobs that pay well above the poverty line because they're essential to running our businesses. Welders and technicians and machine operators, these are people making north of 60,000, north of 80,000. Truck drivers in California, some of them make above the $100,000 mark. Those are great paying jobs. This isn't an industry in which we're dealing with slave labor and bottom of the barrel because it's too technical. Safety is a big part of what we do. And you have to have people who know how to operate safely because without that, we don't get to stay open. Individual operations. So I think that's a very important note going forward. So get out in your communities. Clean, help clean up your communities. Do more for your community. 2022, your resolution should be do more for your communities. The for-profit recycling industry does a lot. Get out there and do more. Make it your point to do more, to educate the people. Hire from your communities. Be a source. Be the beacon in your communities, a place that people in the community say, without that recycling facility, we would be a worse off community. Make it your goal going forward, because that's what we're doing at Sierra. We've hired a community relations coordinator. We've been out cleaning up neighborhoods. You've probably seen it in some of our content. Um, we're doing more. We're hiring from the community more. We, we're giving away. We're giving back to the schools in our community. And I think it's incumbent to everybody to do the same. Get out there and do more. That's your resolution. It should be going forward in 2022. You know, CNN ran this piece on this college student who was um, outraged that in the blue bin or recycle bin, not everything was recycled. All her plastics didn't get recycled. And she was outraged. And how, how can you call it a recycle bin if everything's not recycled that goes into it? I think that that's our opportunity to educate because not everything is recycled. Recyclable. Regardless if the manufacturers call it recyclable, you have to be able to do it with profit. You know, real estate is a big component to recycling facilities. And we don't have enough real estate to store all the plastics that are single-use plastics. Like you go to McDonald's and you, you get your fork and your napkin and your spoon and you tear open that plastic. What do you do with it? Now, you can put it in the blue bin, in the recycle bin. You can do that. But when it goes to MRFs, they're probably not going to get pulled out because there's no weight and then you need too much volume. So I don't think it should be outrageous that everything doesn't get recycled that gets into the recycle bin. I think when they finish recycling everything they possibly can, what's left over doesn't get put into our waterways, doesn't get put into our rivers, into our oceans. They're properly disposed of. At the end, when we've done everything we can to pull out in that particular thing. And so I think people need to understand 80%, more than 80% of everything recycled in this country is industrial recyclables, industrial metals that have been, are a byproduct of manufacturing. You know, the recycle bin is less than 20%, yet it seems it gets a lot of the focus. But if we tell our story that we're 80%, we're above 80%, I think we can change the, the focus here. Without our industry, without the for-profit recycling industry, you know, where's this material going to go? Forget about what it does for the manufacturing and the building of goods. Where are all automobiles going to go? And the pollutants from the oils and the, 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 the liquids that are in automobiles and appliances and any other metal. That, is to, that can be recycled, which is recycled, where's it going to go? We're going to fill up landfill space with materials that can be reused and repurposed? No, that's just, that's crazy. That's asinine. So it's incumbent upon us going back. We have to tell our story. We may be preaching to the choir, but our choir needs to start singing louder. So, you know, we go forward, we're, we're hopefully we're going to have... Um, you know, in 2022, we're looking forward to the ISRI convention. I'm going to be doing a live podcast, and I'm hoping I get a lot of people want to come on and sit down with me on the stage and uh, at our booth in ISRI should, um, should we have an in-person convention, which I really hope we will. But, you know, nobody knows with the, with the virus, with the COVID, what, what will happen. It's my hope that they find the cure. 
I mean, I know the vaccine is important, but you know, like AIDS, they found not necessarily the cure, but they found what helps keep people alive. And hopefully soon the drug companies are going to find cures and solutions to where we can meet again. God forbid somebody in your family does get COVID, that there is treatment. And if we can get treatment that saves more lives, along with the vaccine and along with, you know, being socially responsible, if you're sick, stay home. You know, we can have a great convention here this next year. And I'm really looking forward to seeing everybody again. You know, it's just been so long since we got to be together in a room. And I, I personally, oops, I personally am looking forward to that. Um, you know, some of the other things, too, and in, in, in looking back in the year, we've seen commodity values stay very strong. And 2022, talking to some economists, you know, we have new mills going online. The government um, has a lot of infrastructure plans that they plan on spending a lot of money. I believe our industry is in position to do pretty good this next year. And um, a lot of people made a lot of investments, and we're going to keep investing in our operations because the for-profit recycling industry is about making sure we can be here tomorrow with reinvestment today. And, and it's very important. You know, it's, it's a great industry. Um, how many jobs, how many people's lives we impact, how many families that we feed. You know, this, this industry is, quite frankly, one of the backbones of this country. You know, it's just a great industry to serve. I'm, 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 I'm so blessed to be able to say that I, I work in this industry because I feel like there's real purpose in what we're doing. And, um, you know, we're going to continue on. We're going to march on in 2022. Um, a couple other things, you know, our company Sierra, we're growing. Our, our recycling and demolition side of our business is growing. We're, we're doing more projects. Uh, and, you know, I think urban de uh, demolition is, is urban recycling because you take so many things that you tear down and you pull the recyclables out and then you can reuse the asphalt for base and concrete for base and you know we're doing a lot pulling the metals out and, and there's a lot of things that are being able to be recycled so we do a lot of uh, uh you know urban renewal if you will and uh uh, really excited about that. The, the, our equipment company, Sierra International Machinery, is poised. We're going to be introducing some new products going forward to this uh, new year, and we're really excited about that. And stay tuned. We're going to be announcing things. We you know we've had a lot of fun content. You know, Sierra's out there every day putting out content. I had a lot of fun doing commercials. Um, but, you know, the content that we're creating and why are we doing why do we do this every day is, again, it's about to our message. The message of the good of what we really do and um, the more people that join on us the more people that start doing it, and I've seen a lot more people do it but we need we need thousands of people out there daily thousands of companies saying on a daily basis what they're doing and then maybe people in this country will start saying you know recycling is not is essential and it's critical to what the daily to the health of our communities to the health of the people that live in these communities because without us I think the greater pollution around us would just would just be devastating, and, 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 and that's not what we want. Well, I'm coming here to the end, and again, I want to thank everybody who's listened to Pile of Scrap, everybody who is out there trying to make a difference in the world, in, in our industry. You know, keep, keep fighting, keep swinging, because as, much, as many times as we get, you know, things thrown at us that look like challenges, and they are, but we keep winning because... Together, we can win this, this battle of misinformation and, and lack of understanding of what we do here in the recycling industry. So I want to wish everybody a happy new year, an incredibly prosperous 2022, and get out there and let's have some fun. Have a safe New Year's Eve. Don't drink and drive. That's always my message. You know, our industry, I always say, and I say it every podcast, we are the original environmentalist. And without grit, there is no green. So everybody, I want to say thank you again. Happy New Year. And that's it for this episode of Pile of Scrap. This has been a Sierra International Machinery original audio series. Thanks for listening. Please share this podcast and make sure to subscribe.